Brianna here, and it's craft time at the Reagan Scott Homestead. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about incubators. I've got my big one right here. This is an unbranded incubator off of Amazon. And what that means is that anyone can buy this puppy from China and put their name on it. I believe when we bought ours, it was called an Anne fan. I've also seen them as Kenmars um, and a bunch of other crazy names. Uh, what you're looking for is an automatic 56 egg turner off of Amazon. You will see ratings that range anyway from one star to four stars. Um, and occasionally I'll see them listed at four and a half stars, but I feel like they probably bought those reviews. Uh, what's great is they're not terribly expensive. And what's bad is that there is no documentation on how to work these things. So I'm gonna go over our setup and how you can make uh, this incubator a pretty decent success and not run into the same issues we did that involved me potentially frying uh, 24 eggs like I did last year. Nice eggs, really nice eggs. So we don't wanna do that. So we're gonna go over how to set this up so that you don't make the same mistakes we did. So here we go. All right, so let's go through the settings. Um, as I said, the first one is the temperature. You set this going up or down for what you need. Always make sure to hit set again because that actually puts it in memory. Uh, you can check it and see what's in memory at any time. That's your first one. The next stage, you have to hold down the set button and you get an AL. This means alarm low. Um, <clears throat> also, it goes away pretty fast. <laughs> alarm low, to set that, you will hit set again after you get to alarm low. What this means is that you are setting an alarm that will go off if the temperature drips, dips below this number that you've set a certain number of degrees. So in this case, I have mine, as you watch, hold it on, come on, alarm low. And you will go over here um, to see what it's set. So mine will go off if it drops down one degree. Pretty simplistic. So you have other settings, such as alarm high. So AH is alarm high. And um, I have mine set at one, which is way too high. So we're gonna set that there uh, so it doesn't cook the eggs. And since I didn't set it, I didn't do it fast enough. So you want to check. It's very kind of fiddly that way. Alarm high, set. See how I didn't save it? You gotta move fast and actually set it. And then you are gonna wanna check your settings and make sure they're right in memory. Cause if you didn't do it perfectly, there you go, 0.5. All right, our next setting, should we get there with the menu, is A5. This is your humidity setting. Uh, and I'm gonna be honest, the humidity gauge in this for me just does not work. And the alarm went off all the time and I, I just didn't even think it was right. Uh, so the person's video I found actually had the same problem and uh, they did something similar to this. I just set it at one um, and I use a completely different tool for gauging my humidity and just don't pay any attention to it. But if you wanted to set your alarm for humidity, you could set it here, A5, set it. And then you could set it to what humidity you wanted. If you didn't want it to go below 40%, then you can set it for 40% and there you have it. So that is how you set that. Like I said, I don't think the humidity gauge in here is right at all. And I also got sick of the alarm going off. So that's what you got there. All right, your next setting is really important if you care what the dial says. This is the calibration setting. Um, this is a little tool I use, I got off Amazon as a thermometer. I put it in the middle of my eggs where they sit, and then I read the temperature. This is important if for your settings. So you have two options. You can set this to whatever it needs to be and not care what the dial says. If you want to have it at the right level, uh, you can use the calibration setting. So 
let's say you wanted this dial to say you're 36.5 degrees Celsius, but it really said 26. Um, you can minus or add to your calibration dial. Oh goodness. You can see, see, this is why I get very frustrated with this thing. Cause you gotta move fast. So your calibration, you would set it. And uh, let's say it's running hot. You can set it negative or you can set it positive degrees so that the readout tells you the right amount. I mean, it's if you're going to use the thermostat that's on board, you need to calibrate it at the beginning to make sure you don't fry or freeze your eggs. Um, this one was running about uh, a degree hot. So that's why mine is set to that the last time I used it. But I will be double, triple, quadruple checking that calibration. Um, and I use a secondary thermometer. I use both. So I calibrate it and I use a secondary thermometer to make sure that the thermostat's right in all of my incubators. Your other settings are what I like to call your kid-proof settings. So if you have small ones at home or maybe someone that doesn't know about the incubator, uh, this one will be what you can set it to so that that is the max and min that anybody can even set it. So like you can't go up or down past that, if that makes sense. So basically a kid could come over here and hit all the buttons all day long on the setting and there's a certain threshold, high and low, that you can set it to that they can't touch it. I don't have mine set because I'll be honest, my kids just wouldn't mess with things without asking me. So, uh, but if you had a small toddler or something, I could see possibly wanting to set this. So it is low number. So you could, so nobody would be able to change the dials past 30 in this situation. And uh, there's a high number too, right there and nobody could set it past 38. And it wouldn't matter until you change these, you cannot change this number past 30 or 38. So it's kind of a safety setting. Um, yeah, so that's all the settings. And the other important button is once you have this all calibrated, all set, you're happy with the temperatures, the humidity, the warmth, everything along those lines, this button right here resets everything. Reset your counter, your piece right here, but it doesn't reset any of your settings. So basically this is what you hit after you put your eggs in there and you start your counter. And that is the whole point of this button right here. Um, it's also really useful for getting your egg turner tray in because um, you can just keep hitting the reset button until the little piece comes up and actually click it in there uh, as I showed in the other part of the video. So. All right, I have just a couple more tips. Um, the first one is like the most important thing about this incubator. This heater is down underneath these egg turners. Uh, I ruined an entire two and a half dozen eggs uh, before I realized the temperature up here is vastly different than the temperature on the hatching floor. So you are going to need to turn this thing way down when you start putting your eggs on the hatching floor. Um, use a second thermometer. It will not be calibrated. Like this is just key. I honestly baked um, two dozen eggs. It was horrible. It was horrifying because uh, they had all developed with candling and it was, I had probably 24 chicks that I just fried, not realizing that the hatching floor was a completely different temperature. So. If anything I can give you, when you take this egg turner out, you must absolutely turn this down and then slowly increment it up until you get the right and use a secondary device to test the temperature. Um, the other piece is for humidity. There is a little hole right here and it comes with a squirt bottle. I have no idea where my squirt bottle is. It's probably in with the kids things. Um, it doesn't really matter. You can drip a little water from the top too but there's a channel that you can squirt water into to maintain the humidity. I'm more of a dry hatcher, so I only really set up the water maybe the first couple weeks, and then after that, I just let it go dry. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's important if you like to maintain your humidity. That's the little hole for that. Uh, the only other thing I could say about this incubator is that I have issues maintaining the temperature across the incubator. 
Uh, I have read about using the styrofoam that it came in. So it came in one of these pieces. Uh, so I'm going to cut this this year. I, I tried wrapping it with towels and everything last year. Uh, I'm gonna cut that to size around the top where I can leave this dial out to help maintain the heat because it just comes through this thin plastic way too fast. Hi Juno, thanks for helping me with my egg incubator tutorial. So that should get you all set uh, with your Amazon 56 automatic egg turner. Uh, like I did successfully hatch quail after I learned that I how not to fry them. So it does definitely work. Uh, you just need to be sure that you've got your settings right and by all means invest in a second thermometer and follow those directions there. Thanks. Okay, you got to just watch me ride the struggle bus there, getting this in here. Um, the key component, oh, which I hate to do this, um, but the only way to really show it is to take the egg turner back out. Why I didn't do that first, I don't know, but uh, we'll see if we can sneak it in under here. The key component of this entire piece is a little yellow piece underneath here. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna take the whole thing out. Let's try this again. The key component piece is this little piece right here um, that connects to this little piece right here on your egg turner. And if you don't get those into each other, the egg turner does not work. So that's what you saw me struggling. And the best way to do that is get it in a good position by hitting the reset button over and over again. As you can see, it will slowly rotate there until you can get it on the appropriate spot. But that's how you get the egg turner in. I don't want to talk about how long it took me for, to figure that out. But yeah. And uh, be careful, this can be bent on this piece right here, um, in or out. So I actually had to bend mine a little bit when I got it so that it fit properly. But that's how you get the egg turner in.